Are you wanting to really improve your self-esteem, maybe your mental health? Well, today I'm going to share this thing with you that's really, really helped enhance the quality of mine, both in terms of mental health, self-esteem and my life. And if you stay until the end, I have an extra point for you then as well. As always, if you want to connect with me further, you can find my links in the show notes below. So today, I, I've got to be honest, I felt uh, there was a time I felt pretty good, pretty energetic. And there was, there was a time I had a bit of a drop in energy, um, had a little bit of stress, a little bit of um, anxiety. And then I realized what it was, what I had done to cause that and what I'd done also to feel good. Now, I don't believe there's going to be a point in my life or in anyone's life where you just you're just like happy, you're full of energy all the time, right? Life life comes in to challenge us, right? The aim I believe though is to be in those good times more often than others, right? Now, of course, there may be a a sad thing that happens in your life whereby you're going to have a spell where you're not going to feel so good. Of course, right? We're only humans. What I've realized, though, is sometimes I've unnecessarily put myself into feeling bad. And that's from a lack of self-awareness. And self-awareness is really what I wanted to share with you and how that is key, being key on my mental health and my self-esteem, my self-love, all those kind of things. All right. It's the way I've been thinking, it's what I've been eating, it's what I've been drinking, it's who I've been hanging out with. All those things, when I've become aware, have really given me insight into the way I've been feeling. And the thing is, as human beings, we're so busy, right? Maybe you can relate to this, that we just go through our day, we don't really think about what we're doing, um, because we can't, we can't think about everything, right? If we thought about everything, we'd have like, our brain would explode, right? We do things automatically, we put our shoes on automatically, you know, drive your car in the, in the same direction if you're going to the work the same, the same way. Uh, you may have the same conversation with someone um, or similar conversations with people, right? We're, we're creatures of habit. The problem is that can serve us and not serve us, right? Because it can serve you by the fact you don't have to think so much and then you get into some good habits. You know, you could develop the habit of getting into a gym and you're just not even aware you're doing it anymore, uh, but you're, you're in good shape, right? But you could also get into a habit of you just come home, you eat like some processed food and yeah, you just don't look after yourself and maybe that's what you want. That's, that's totally cool. Um, but maybe it's not, and you're not even aware you're doing it or some of the behaviors, right? Uh, for years, I was a really heavy drinker in my 20s, and I wouldn't even be paying attention to how quickly I was drinking my drinks, go to reduce the social anxiety, right? So becoming self-aware for me has been really key in my mental health and my relationship with myself, and obviously my relationship with other people in my life as well. So I want to share some tips on really how I've built this. Maybe you're someone who's been so caught up in the same patterns. I want to ask you, how does it help you when you're in, maybe in the same patterns and you're just doing the same things and you're feeling the same way? Well, I've had recent conversations with people and I've shared something with them and they're like, I'm going to get around to looking at it, but they're like sad, they're down, they're not feeling good. And they, they just don't change their behavior. And they want to, but they're just so unaware. And that's the beauty of other people who are really going to push them. And and I've had that in my life. Coaches who are going to push me, catch me in my patterns. Now, I'd really recommend that, of course, getting someone external to hire so they can help you. It starts off with ourselves, though. So let's go into some points that I found really useful for helping on my self-awareness. The first one is collect notes on your phone as you go through your week. Now, everyone's got a phone, pretty much. Uh, not everyone on planet Earth, sadly, but, uh, well, maybe it's a good thing. Sometimes we don't have one, but most of us have mobile phones, right? And we get addicted to things like social media, news scrolling, whatever we're going to be doing, right? Uh, I know I'm certainly guilty of trying to reduce my, my screen time. But you can use it in a good way. You can use the notes function and just write down as you go. So you don't have to keep getting a pen and paper out. Just write down. Any times you're feeling good, oh, suddenly I felt really good at this moment. And you notice that maybe you've had a healthy meal, or maybe you're hanging out with someone who makes you feel really good, or you're thinking a certain way. 
Start noting that down. And then when things aren't feeling so good, write down that as well. Maybe you're thinking a certain way. Maybe there's a certain person that makes you feel that way. Maybe a certain situation, right? Now, of course, there's going to be situations that are going to make you feel a little bit nervous and fearful that maybe you need to push through, right? Like maybe doing a talk in, in work or something like that. But like, if there's something that's draining you and it's not doing you any favors and it's not going to push you or grow you, then record that down. The second thing is what I would do, and this is what I do, is take it ideally to a weekly journal session, really getting down, okay, these are the behaviors that I've been doing this week that are serving me and not serving me. How do I encourage more of these good behaviors and what systems am I going to put in place to reduce some of these not so good ones, right? So maybe you find yourself snacking as an easy example. You go into the cupboard the same time every day and you just eat like a load of biscuits and you don't feel so good afterwards. System in place could be to just remove the biscuits, <laughs> as simple as it sounds, right, from your, from your home. Or maybe you start feeling bad when you're listening to something. Well, maybe remove that app or that song or that whatever it is off your phone or from your TV or whatever, right? So that's what a weekly journal session can do. And the third thing I'm going to share is practice interrupting in advance. When you're becoming more aware of maybe some of the the most common or the, the most common emotion that's coming up that's not serving you, that you don't, it's not making you feel so good. It's not about suppressing it so that like you just push it away. I don't want to feel that. I don't want to feel bad. What I do is I proactively think about what I want to feel, the good feeling, and then I practice interrupting that pattern in advance. So I allow myself to feel bad and then I'll jump up, I'll smile, and then I'll feel the good emotion and I'll keep repeating that cycle. So what that conditions my brain to do is to jump from that negative feeling into a more empowering one. Now, I've got a final point for you as well. I want to mention again, though, if you want to connect me more on social media, you can find my links in the show notes below. The final point I'm going to share is imagine you had your ideal life or maybe like just your six month goal from now, if you want to keep it smaller and like, because sometimes what I like to do is put my goals six to 12 months, um, you know, have some, I like to have a big vision, like I, what my dream, dream life would look like. Sometimes that can feel a little bit overwhelming, a bit of a gap, like being a multi, multi, multi millionaire right and then got all these all these like uh fancy vehicles you know my dream life my dream wife my dream everything i'm doing on the beach right and that can feel great to start off with but then it can feel a little bit of a gap so what i like to do to bridge that gap is look at actually where would i ideally like to be in six to 12 months right towards that and that can be exciting so it's something that's ambitious with more within reach though and then what I do is think about what is the way of thinking I would need to think in that way. So maybe I get stressed over certain small situations right now, which I certainly do, especially spreadsheets and stuff sometimes. And then I think, right, would I be thinking in that way in if I was in that in that position? No, I wouldn't in like six to 12 months in that goal. So start writing down the way you would be thinking or would have to think or be if you were at your, your goals in six or 12 months. And then what I do every day is read that, read that again and again and again, and read it like three times and really try and embed it. I actually, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Put it, well, what's the word? I've, I've lost the word. Anyway, I try and include it in like this trampoline, jumping up and down, rebounding exercise I do as well, which is really cool, but we won't jump onto that. Uh, but yeah, writing down your way of thinking can be a really effective one. And then just becoming more and more aware, that's the way you want to start operating and thinking, coming back to that self-awareness piece. So that's what i got for you today. I appreciate you for being here. And remember to leave with your heart and not with fear.